program is brought to you in part by Sal Cal Real Estate Connections. Yes, welcome to the 2021 Plainville Stadium reunion. And unfortunately, we had to get quarantined and we could not do any interviews with drivers like we usually do. But we did do a photo shoot of the event and hopefully maybe next year this time we could get back to normal. I'm sure you'll enjoy the show. Yes, one of the first cars we got to see was this uh, original car dating back to Billy Greco. And of course, George Greco built the car. It was always great to see these old cars. And they, you just don't come across them that often. And Billy made this car famous, let me tell you. No matter where he went, he was successful. And I believe this car originally was raced up in New York at Malta. And yeah, the race car guys are always having fun. Of course, being Halloween, <laughs> you know, coming up, that was, <laughs> they didn't waste any time. And yeah, this 43 was looking good, let me tell you. Excellent example of a car in its day. Another example we looked at was this number five, which I believe is another asphalt modified car. A nice coupe, as you could see. Not sure where the car raced, but it looks just like something you would see at Plainville Stadium or Riverside Park. Beautiful car. Another car we came across is number 36 was raced in uh, Middletown, New York, Lebanon Valley, uh, Manandock, East Windsor, New Jersey. I believe it was a dirt and asphalt car. And back in the day, let me tell you, you run what you brung. It's the best way to describe it. And the car had a very interesting history, as you could see. You know, cars of that era, the... They did a lot of traveling, and let me tell you, there's an interesting trophy. <laughs> a couple of bottles of Schaefer. That, that's, that's a relic in, in its own. But the car was pretty, and you could see it, you know, it was just like the old coupe that was prominent in the day. Beautiful car, I have to say. Another car we came across was the number 54, I believe, driven by Sparky Belmont. And boy, in his day, he made this car fly. And this was a great example. The car we came across, and he's giving you a list of people who helped him out here to build this car. And he made it famous. I'll, I'll give you that. The Double Zero Purple Car driven by Jack Membrino at Plainville Stadium. Boy, he took his share of checkers there for sure. And we have to tell you, his, his kids really did a great job putting this car together. Of course, it wouldn't be right unless we had a chance to look at the dollar sign that was driven by Donna Spazzano. Who really made this car famous and we miss him so much i'll tell you rest in peace don we'll remember you forever of course when you talk about plainville stadium it wouldn't be right unless we mention don moon in the flying nine here as he's thanking all the people who helped build the car and he was just a great racer all the years at Plainville. Made the car famous. And it looks just like in the day. And yes, 
fresh from its restoration. And believe me, this car was just absolutely gorgeous. This number 52 coupe that Tony Mordino made famous, and he built the car. And I have to tell you, I got to give Tony Jr. a lot of credit. He just made this car so, so special. I just can't believe how it looks. In the day, let me tell you, Tony took checkers no matter where he went. And he went to a lot of places. And this is just a great tribute to him and all he'd done in the day. Car was just as simple and beautiful. Yes, remembering Tony Mordina was special. And when I look at this car that they restored or brought back to what a, what the car looked like in the day, it was just unbelievable, I'll tell you. And what he had here for memorabilia about how what he where he raced and different cars he drove was very special. And trophies, I mean, you name it. I mean. Everything they had here was just excellent. And I'm sure he's looking down and very proud of Tony Jr. for all he has done for him. And he's just a great racer. And we're glad that uh, we got to know him and Jr. too. Two great people. And yes, now we're going to have an award ceremony with Gary Danko that you're going to find very interesting, I'm sure. Everybody, welcome to the 13th annual Plainville Stadium Racing the Union here at the Berlin Fairgrounds. At this time, I'd ask you to please stand as we're going to have a moment of silence for former car owners and drivers that have passed on and our latest driver, and a champion at Plainville Stadium that passed on just about a week ago, Gary Membrino. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna get rolling here with the group picture. Once uh, Phil Hoyt works his way into the pavilion here, Phil uh, is probably still over Oh, here he is. He's coming up. Okay. So Phil Hoyt's going to do a group picture. So if you are a former driver, car owner, we ask you at this time, please come to my right for the group picture. The double zero car, please welcome Tony Jack Membrino. He 
the West Haven Speedway. He'd come down to the open shows at uh, Plainville Stadium. He had a great racing career. Right after here, he's gonna be going up to Stafford Speedway, and he's gonna actually drive today in a race in uh, a Pinto. It's the original number 43 Pinto that he drove. Please welcome Billy Greco. Had success at the Plainville Stadium. He drove the number 43 car. He drove the 222 and other race cars. Please welcome Elton Hill. introduce a uh, race at the uh, Plainville Stadium, other racetracks as well. Please welcome Pete Bagadigian. Here today at the 13th annual Plainville Stadium, Johnny Lane. The next gentleman that's uh, here with us today, how about a big round of applause for Walt Smith. Yeah. Hey Don, why don't you come right over here and make the presentation to, to Walt. Big round of applause for Walt Smith. There you go. Great to see Walt here with us today. Next gentleman here with us, please welcome Phil Mitchell. And up next, Bobby Knox here with us today. Big round of applause for Bobby Knox. He certainly could wheel a race car, right Don? This next driver that I'm about to announce, he drove in the novice division at Plainville. Please welcome Rob Knox.
Always great to see Ron Knox with us here. As I mentioned, he drove in the novice division. The next gentleman is Gene Ziegler here with us today. Please welcome Roland Sear. Up next, I'm gonna introduce three at once here. The next gentleman I'm gonna to introduce to you, he built the car that Tony Mordino drove. Please welcome Carmola. I'm also gonna have Mike Mordino and Tony Mordino Jr. go up as well. And Tony, really quick, tell us a little bit about Frank. Well, 1961, Frank Carmola co-owned the car with Mickey Lucas. They won 10 features, seven straight features. They had a bounty on my father's head for anybody that could beat them. And they were just a real successful team. They got along well. Um, Frankie eventually sold his part of the car. Unfortunately, I wish they stayed together a little bit longer, but they had a hell of a run, you know. Certainly did. Glad to have you guys here today. Thanks. Welcome. And yes, looking at the sign for the refreshments was really interesting to look at the prices, hot dogs, 25 cents. So there was a dime, ice cream, 15. Interesting, wasn't it? And of course, the car here, 54, driven by Dave Alcus, five-time champ. And let me tell you, he wheeled this car owned by Roland Sear. Example of a car raced in the Northeast here was this number 62 midget and believe me the car was just flawless from head from front to back perfect example of the day probably with a Ford 60 motor in it that was the motor of choice back in the day and believe me it was a pretty car and yes it was a 19 47 Curtis Craft Midget, and boy, let me tell you, in the day, this car really ran great, I'm sure. Look at the amount of drivers that drove this car. Unbelievable. They were great cars, and of course, I'm sure it had one of those Ford 60 motors also. And yes, the number 12, Hudson Hornet. It's always a fan favorite here. And believe me, the car is just absolutely gorgeous, just like in the day when they ran it to the beach. And yes, and now the big kids are going to have some fun on the go-kart track. And believe me, this should get very interesting. I don't know how to even fit into one of these things. It's got to be not easy.
And yes, now we're gonna get strapped in and get ready here. This, <laughs> this is getting quite a, an adventure, let me tell you. Can't wait to see how this turns out. Please tune in again next week to Racing Action Today. And yeah, these kids, I'll tell you, they just never grow up for sure. Fun day, absolutely. Thank you for watching. This program is brought to you in part by R2 Pictures and real estate broker Larry Mangello.